Welcome back to our channel once again. In this video, we are going to study about one of the important characteristics of operational amplifier, that is the input impedance and the output impedance of op-amp. Ideally, the input impedance of operational amplifier should be infinite and output impedance should be zero. To understand that concept, let's understand the basic amplifier. So we have a source here this with a source resistance RS and a feedback. This is the input impedance of the amplifier and this is the output, internal output impedance. And here is two terminals. So this is what we have as operational amplifier. So what is the very essence of op-amp? It is to amplify a weak signal, right? So let's say we want to amplify a signal Vs by a factor of two in case of uh, inverting amplifier. So the equation would, would be something like RF by RS times Vs is nothing but the output, right? That's what the equa output equation for inverting amplifier is, right? Now, when we write this, what we consider is there shouldn't be any current passing into this part of the amplifier right across the terminal through the terminal basically this terminal and this terminal inverting and non-inverting terminal right so whatever current is going through this must go like this and there shouldn't be any current going into this so the current going into the amplifier inside the amplifier must be zero so how can we make that zero so to have that current zero right, passing through this input impedance the z in so if i is zero and if we apply the Ohm's law, what can we write here is I equals V, V plus minus V minus divided by Z in, right? Now, I do not want any current to pass through this, right? Why? Because it will load the source and we do not want to load the source because it will, it will basically go against the very essence of amplifier that is to amplify a weak signal, right? It will not completely amplified by the, by the factor which we wish to amplify with, right? Therefore, we do not want any current passing through this, through this uh, wire. Now, now, how can we do that? So the current should be zero. How can we make current zero? If this goes to infinity, right? So finite by infinite will give us the zero current, right? Therefore, the input impedance of operational amplifier must be infinite, in ideally, or practically, it should be as high as possible, right? So that is one way to look at why the input impedance should be operational, of an operational amplifier should be as high as possible. Other ways, if you look at the, if you draw the simplified network for the input side, what we have is source voltage along with the source resistance and the input impedance. Now, if we apply the voltage divider technique here, then the voltage across this, across this, these two terminals is basically, let's say Vx, and here, let's say Vy. Now the Vx is nothing but V source multiplied by Z in, divided by Z in plus Rs, right? Now, here I do not want any current to flow. If the input impedance here is goes to infinity, if it goes to infinity, then, or very high, then this RS, even though there is presence of RS, Zn is much more than RS, therefore this term would be neglected, and this and this will get cancelled. So what we get out of this is, we are able to reproduce the same voltage what we have at the source. So basically, this amplifier will amplify the actual source voltage, which becomes the which becomes equal to the input voltage to the output, right? By a factor of feedback, basically RF by RS in this case. So it will basically amplify Vs to the output if we have the Z in equals infinity, right? So that's another way to look at it. Therefore, we can say the input impedance must be as high as possible and ideally it should be infinite. Now, similarly, in case of output side, now we have some voltage here, right? 
let's say Vy, okay. Now, this is the voltage amplified by a factor of A times V in. Now, we want this voltage to appear at the output. It means there shouldn't be any obstruction on the way, right? So, the Z out should be as small as possible or ideally zero. To understand that again, we can draw the voltage divided network and when we draw, this can be written as voltage output can be written as the Vy, Vy times RL divided by RL plus Z out, right? So to have this output equal to Vy, because we do not want to lose any signal, if we amplify by, by a factor of 2, we want the output to be amplified, input to be amplified by a factor 2 without any distortion. So to achieve that, we do not want the output Vy to have some drop across the resistance. Therefore, if I make this output 0, or negligibly small, then I can say RL is much more than Z out and RL, RL gets cancelled. Therefore, V output is equal to Vy. In that way, without losing the signal, we can achieve what amplifier is giving us after amplification of the input signal, right? That's why the input impedance of operational amplifier should be as high as possible, ideally infinite. In fact, an output impedance should be zero or as low as possible to proper for proper amplification so that's it for today's video hope you found this information insightful and helpful uh, stay connected see you in the next video